Happy Friday, everybody. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2009. Sorry, I got a lozenge in my mouth. 2019 Panini Woman Football. 12 box, Patreon most week. Big thanks to all of these folks on a Friday. Pick your team three. That's Jay. I think you got that in a team random number one, I think. And there's everyone else. Everyone else bought their spot straight up. Jeremy Mennel, last spot mojo, New York football giants. And there's everybody. Thanks for buying all these spots straight up, ladies and gentlemen. We've got another case. Uh, pick your team number four. Has 21 teams left. We'll be doing that tomorrow. So I would grab your teams... Uh, I want to grab your teams now while you have the chance. Otherwise, they may possibly get thrown into a, a team random. So if you want to avoid that, you can definitely get your teams now. All right. Four, eight, and twelve. Good luck, everybody. What does everyone think? So far, so good, right? We've done, what, three? So this is pick your team three, but we did a random division, too. So we've done three full cases, and this will be our fourth full case. Still kind of a small sample size, but I feel like, I feel like orders have been pretty brisk on this. And I feel like everyone seems to be enjoying it, yeah? I want to say, I don't think we have any more cases after Pick Your Team 4 and 5. Let me check. Yeah, Pick Your Team 4 and 5 are our last cases. Now, I don't know if we're going to get any more. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. I don't know. But get into it while supplies last. All right. Good luck. So we're going to breeze through these. These will sleeve and top load before they go out. And Dexter Williams to 349 is going to go to... I need a checklist, actually. Why did I close that checklist? Dexter Williams is a Packer, Green Bay. There you go. Patrick K. just typed it in, too. Thank you. I still haven't learned all these guys yet. I will. I'm not in midseason form yet. Still baseball season for me. And we've got Mitchell Trubisky for the Bears. Love the photography in this. That goes to Michael Koontz in the Bears. What, Darnold? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I remember now. Wait, where did he go? No, no Sam Darnold yet, but I, I remember now. How'd you confuse Sam Darnold with Philip Rivers? Hey, you'd be happy, Joey, if Sam Darnold turned out to be turned out to put together a Philip Rivers career. There's Bryce Love, who is a Redskin, I think. Yeah, Redskin. That'll go to Patrick. And TJ Hawkinson, Whiteout Ink Autograph for the Lions. Nice. Kevin Smith, who got the Lions straight up. All these people got them straight up, except for the Falcons. Nice. And DJ 
All right, next one. Joey, talk to me here. Um, how is uh, how are you feeling about Sam Darnold and his future? Is he it? He's the guy? QB of the future? I think he could be. He had that great that great game early in this season. You know, and then kind of tailed off, plateaued a little bit after that. There he is. I mean, that's not a bad first season, right? Almost three, 3,000 yards, 17 touchdowns. That's not so bad. And on a, you know, no offense, not a very good team. Few quarterbacks are like Andrew Luck, right? Where they just can pop into any team and just like literally turn them around. I think that is... You know, that's kind of unrealistic to expect your quarterback for most quarterbacks to do that. You know, not all quarterbacks are going to be able to just pop right in. And even Andrew Luck had his struggles his first year, too. There's Mike Williams for the Chargers. Um, but with the, how important the quarterbacking position now, I think you at least want him to be the quarterback to be competent, right? There's Damian Harris to 199. All right, and he's got weapons now, too, right? Le'Veon Bell. Wait, who else did they add? They got a wide receiver too, didn't they? I'm looking up Damian Williams. Damian Harris is a Patriot. So then I'll go to Karen and the Pats. There you go, Karen. There's Dak Prescott to 108, and there's Emmanuel Hall, 307 out of 349. Jameson Crowder is the addition. Emmanuel Hall is a bear, and that'll head out to Chicago, Michael Kuntz. There you go, Mike. Remember, we'll leave and top load those before they go out. And for the Bears, Anthony Miller. Autograph? No, just Relic. Nice. Four out of 99. And Bill L. Powell re-signed today, says Joey. How do you feel about, uh, how do you feel about uh, Adam Gase is the new coach, right? And you guys are still looking for a GM? King D, what's going on? Do you think Gase can help Sam a lot, Sam Darnold a lot with his play calling to his Joey? All right. Yeah, I'd like to see a little more co competitiveness in the AFC East. You know, that, that, that Patriots dynasty is winding down. You know, Tom Brady's not getting any younger, and time will always catch up to every player including Tom Brady. So, you know, AFC East teams want to be on the right upswing, the right cycle going up. Here's Greedy Williams, 349, who I think is a Cardinal. So you want to be on an upswing when, when that eventually happens. Browns for this one, Glenn Campbell. I mean, Phoenix 11's like, yeah, it's been winding down for 10 years, man. Yeah, 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 I don't know. But now it's really winding down. Now it's really winding down. I hope. Yeah, 
And there's a little Jordan Humphrey, who I believe is a saint. Out of 149. He is. And that'll go to... Uh, that'll go to... Hunter Watson. Of the Saints. <laughs> right. Phoenix. Brady plays till he's 50 and then NFL fans just off themselves. And Mass. They're like, forget it. Turns out that Brady's actually a cyborg and he's been using... Using robot parts to fix his limbs. It'll be the biggest scandal of the century. There's Roger Craig. Autograph. Nice. Old school Niner. 24 out of 25. One of Victor Z. And then his son will be... Can you imagine that? Oh, man. Niners. Brady plays till he's 50. The, narr the narrative, the narrative will be, will be like quarterbacks will never be able to get touched in the pocket, out of the pocket, whatever. There's DK Metcalf for the Seahawks. That's the narrative. Brady's son takes over. Belichick's son takes over, and they just keep the dynasty going. Phoenix Eleven says we have it all planned out. Man. It'll be like Manchester United in like the 90s and the early 2000s. Well, someday there'll be a chosen one who will, who will finally take down Tom Brady and the rest of that evil empire. Um, no, it's NFL, but the rookie ink autographs, Doran, are still uh, in their college gear, right? But the draft day autographs, let's grab an example. We pulled one, didn't we? And these draft day autos, though, have their pro teams on it. Those are the on cards, have their pro teams. The rest are, the rest of the rookie autos are not, so... There's Nick Bosa and Rodney Anderson. I think this is one of the last sets. Um, I think this is one of the last sets where they will have the college uniforms. I think future sets should start seeing them more in their pro gear. Rodney Anderson, former Oklahoma Sooner, is currently a Bengal. That'll be for Scott B. No, Joe P. Not a fan of Luminance. So Rory, Rory was saying earlier, Joe, that at his, at his shop, there are a group of people who love luminance, and then a group of people that hate luminance. But there's like there's very few in between. Well, that's true, King D. He does hate everything. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I I, th I think there are some people who are just like they really like it. Some people that really hate it. But. But there's nothing in between, right? And there's no, there's few people that are like, eh, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> you know, I'll collect a little bit of it. Now everyone's like either nope or yep. Andrew gets the Ravens, has the Ravens, will get the Lamar Jackson relic. I don't know. I'm in the camp where I, uh, where I kind of like it a lot. I like that kind of sort of pseudo street art kind of font. I like the the color. You know, the, the the warm tone in the photos. I like the photography. A lot of action in there. And there's Alexander Madison. And that's for the Vikings. Stephen B. with the Vikes. Phoenix says it makes me appreciate legacy more. You know what? Maybe the, maybe this speaks to our audience, but this stuff um, sold a lot more quickly than Legacy did. Legacy moved a little moved a little bit. I mean, we sold a lot of it, but but it moved a little bit on the slower side compared to this. 
One out of ten, Daryl Henderson. Nice low number there. Daryl Henderson is a Ram. That'll be for Jeff Mason. Out of ten as well. Well, I hope I hope other people feel the same way, Phoenix. Phoenix is like I was I was initially met on Legacy, but it grew on me. So I think we have, I think we're getting another case or two at some point. So we'll bring it back, and hopefully by then people will be like, hey, we warmed up to Legacy. We'll get back into it again. There is kind of a a prime cuts vibe in Legacy that I really liked. Right, like old old prime cuts baseball. And there is number twenty, Barry Sanders. Vintage relic going to Kevin Smith and the Lions. We got Jeffrey Simmons to 149. I feel like we had another Jeffreys. I kind of memorize all of these at some point. I think once we get to the beginning of the season, I should have all these guys memorized. Titans. Titans. Joe P's like, who? It's, these are, it's a new draft class, Joe P. A lot of these guys are going to be who? Oh, we're responding to King D. Justice Hill, 4 out of 10. Buffalo Bills, man? Baltimore Ravens. That'll go to Andrew. Oh, you're responding to me? I don't know. Hey, listen, a couple years ago, we were pulling Dak Prescott autographs, and people were being like, who? Let's see how that turned out. <laughs> I, I've said that in previous breaks, Phoenix. I was like, this is pretty much Instagram. Dual autograph. Our first dual autograph. Draft day duels. Marquise Brown and DK Metcalf. Marquise Browns. Marquise Brown is a Raven, I think. Yep, he's a Raven. And that's a Seahawk. Bird card. So that'll be a randomizer. Oh, it says on the back right there. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Oh, right. The on cards have the proteins on. Um, so that's Ravens, Andrew Herman, versus Seahawks, Peter Lombardo. So we'll set that right there. All right, next box. So we'll randomize that at the end of the break. Yeah, the year of the DAC. Yes, that was that was that was uh, that was Joe P going bananas on a lot of group breaks. The days of the Joe P. Still glad you hang out though. Now to Miami, where the Braves gave Mike Soroka some nice 
That means you really like us. You like us. You really like us. Here's Len Dawson. No, it's all good, Joe P. It's all good, it's all good man. Old Len Dawson going to the Chiefs, John Watson. And we and we've got Trayvon Mullen Jr. out of one forty nine. That reminds me of Larry Mullen Jr. from U two. Mullen. Is a oh he's a Raider. How many Clemson guys did we get? I think Cleveland Farrell is a Clemson guy too. Isn't Hunter Renfro a Clemson guy as well? Did Mike Mayock just draft Clemson players? I guess he maybe he did. Let's carry on Johnson and Miles Boykin out of 349. Boykin sounds like a Packer to me. No, he's a Raven. Hey, Patrick K., I'm okay with that. Get Clemson guys, wants to get winners. Rebuild that, rebuild that winning culture that the Raiders haven't seen since late 70s, early 80s. And Will Greer. Nice whiteout ink autograph for the Carolina Panthers. Uh, Aiken Scanlon with with the Panthers. I want winners. I want players that want to win. Next box. There you go. That's Aiken right there. Nice. Dodgers Astros World Series. I don't know if my my heart can handle another Dodgers Astros World Series. But I, I I like the revenge narrative, like when the Lakers saw the Celtics for a second time in the finals and beat them after losing a couple years before then before that. To them. It could be. Well, the Dodgers need a little bullpen help. Their bullpen low key not good. But, you know, they've been winning, so, you know, that hasn't really made anyone nervous yet. Out of 49, lights, Camara action. Hunter Watson with the Saints. So the Dodgers can either shore that up internally or shore that up internally or get a, get some help externally, whatever the case is. Then I'd feel a little bit more confident. We got Julian Love this time out of 149. We got Bryce Love and Julian Love. Is a giant, a New York football giant, going to Jeremy Mendel. Yeah, well, I mean, if they're in the World Series or just in general, or both. If they're in the World Series and you watch a game here, I cannot guarantee your safety. At three forty-nine, Cleland Farrell. And that'll be for my Raiders. Arturo with the Raiders. Alright, yeah, I feel like it's safer for me to go to Houston and watch the game. There's Tyreek Hill to 49. And Kyler Murray for Glenn Campbell. 52 out of 75. Nice. Not a draft day auto, but still nice. 
Glenn Campbell with Arizona. By the time I get to Phoenix, Kyler Murray will be rising. He'll leave some touchdowns right on the door. All right. Next box. Watch Glenn Campbell's like 24 years old and he's like, I don't understand that reference show. All right. Last box of the second third of the case. And then we'll get into the final third and then we'll do that randomizer. Uh, there's veteran autographs, Roy. We just pulled a uh, we just pulled a Roger Craig. Well, that's a Hall of Famer, but yeah, we've pulled like second year players and whatnot. And there's Chris Godwin. Wait, someone wanted a Chris Godwin. He's hammered that into my brain now. Bob, Bob Wessel, wake up! I don't know why he's on a Chris Godwin kick, but there it is. 83 out of 99, Chris Godwin. Um, you're going to have to talk to Michael Blunt if you want that one. Email us, jaspiescasebreaks at gmail.com, and we'll share his information with you if he's okay with that. He was Bob. Here's Greedy Williams to 99. That's another one for the Cardinals. Cardinals, right. Greedy. Williams is a Cleveland Brown. My bad. Still learning. Glenn Campbell with the Browns. Lawrence Taylor to 100 and Antoine Wesley, 349. Damn it. I gotta look this guy up again because he's not on the not on the base card checklist, so his pro team isn't there. Ravens. That's right. How do I remember this? Oh, Texas Tech, Red Raiders, R, Ravens. Red Raiders to Ravens. There you go. Got it. Andrew with that one. Now I won't forget. There's Gronk. Jalen Hurd. You heard? Gary Jennings, and Joe Mixon, three-color relic. That is for Scott V and the Bengals. Oh, there's a number right there. 19 out of 49. All right, time for the final third of the case. Good luck, everybody. Nice, Joey. Mariners win, giving me another green. So I picked, I was on 10 games today, ladies and gentlemen. And I got seven today, including a couple big underdogs. I'm back, baby, at least for the last three days. I need these. I'm, I'm down a lot. I gotta catch up. I need I need a few more days like this. All right, all right. See you, King D. Thanks for popping in. All right, we are almost there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I don't think anything else is sold out. I'll be honest with you guys. I, I've I've run out of steam. Yeah, it doesn't look like any of the short breaks are any closer. So, all right. So we're going to call it a night after this. So we'll get there. Joe, you can't believe I picked the Rockies to beat DeGrom. It's always great to pick against those excellent pitchers because, um, because uh, whatchamacallit, they're always overvalued.
There's David Montgomery to 349. So the Rockies are plus 194, right? But that's because of the Jacob deGrom. He's not that he's overrated, but it's a New York team. It's a public team. Everyone's, everyone's going to be like, deGrom, easy. He's going he's gonna to take on the, the Rockies. But really, in, all, in actuality, Bears, Patrick, I'll just go, I'll trust you on that. Michael Koontz with the Bears. Our shipping team will look these up too. Um, so really, the Rockies are probably only plus 150, which doesn't sound crazy. 194 sounds crazy. Joey, for that score update, I'll send you that Le'Veon Bell, too. Look at that. They photoshopped him in Jets uniform. Well, it kind of looks good in Jets green, doesn't it? There's Zay Jones. It's the same reason why I picked against... Uh, Picked against uh, Kershaw as well today, and I won that too. And that's also a divisional rival game as well. Divisional rivals that are under 500 tend to battle a little extra against their div rivals. Uh, Brandon Nichols and the Colts. There's some other factors that I put into play, but that's some of the handicapping. Nick Bosa. Just a piece of fuzz on there. 20 out of 99, Nick Bosa for the Niners. That goes to Victor Z. Five and Deontay Johnson for the Steelers. That's a nice autograph, but I wish he would expand it a little bit more. That's a Steeler. That's for Steel Curtain, maybe? Yes, for Steel Curtain, Michael Gallucci and his Steelers. My, what was my numbers for the, for the Mets? Yeah, I feel like the line should have been around plus 160. Would have been would have been even, but at plus 194, there was a little bit of a little bit of an edge there. And instead of minus 210 for the Mets, they should have been like minus 160. So the other opposite. So there's overvalue at minus 210. So you kind of go against that. Also, what was the box score like? You know, it could have also been like DeGrom cruises for six innings, right? But then the crappy Mets bullpen gives up runs, right? So there's, there's also that. Yeah, the, that, whatchamacallit, someone, Gannon? Ganyan, Gag Gagnon, gave up three earned runs in the top of the eighth inning, right? So that bullpen blows yet another DeGrom game. And he stuck with the L, even though he went like six strong, only giving up two earned runs, you know? And then just Mets offense didn't show up today. So getting all that, putting all that together... Putting all that together, you know, you can you can find some edge against a, a top tier pitcher. There's Marcus Mariota relic for the Titans. Andrew Herman with that. I mean, I mean, I, I'm sure I, there, there's numbers that you guys can crunch or or research somewhere, but I'm pretty sure that that if you bet against every like top twenty pitcher in baseball, right, that you at the end of the end, let's say you bet 10 bucks on each of those games, I think you might be up by the end of the year. Even though you might have a losing record 
You know what I mean? Sir, you're a and we've got, for my Raiders, there's Hunter Renfro, another Clemson guy. Silver Ink Autograph. Who's got my Raiders? Arturo with my Raiders. Nice. On-card autograph. Joey's like, I can never bet baseball. Yeah, initially there was a bit of a... I don't know. It was There was a bit of a learning curve. I think years ago, I think I was... You know, didn't know what I was really doing. Byron Murphy... But I did a little more research and kind of figured out a little system of my own and kind of really put it into effect last year. And I broke even. Uh, Byron Murphy, I think, is a cardinal. He is a cardinal that goes to Glenn. There's Adam Thielen. And Montez Sweat to 349. That's a red skin for Patrick Kay. I keep thinking of, I keep wanting to say Eagles on this guy, but that's because I'm thinking of Josh Sweat on the Eagles from last, last year, last year's rookie. I gotta get last year's out of my head. I gotta get into, get into this year. All right, two boxes to go. Yeah, for betting baseball, it's tough. But, and I mean, there's tons of ways to, to do it, but the way I do it is that whatever money line is available for, whatever money line is available on whatever book you see, whether it's in Vegas or whatever, that can be translated into what they think the winning percentage is going to be. So like minus 150 or minus 160, they're saying that they feel like that team's going to win 55, 60% of the time. Now there's a number of websites that you can use that'll give their win probability projections. There's Joe Mixon to 49. It's another one for Bengals, Scott B. And you take that information and then you compare it with the book information and then you see if there's a, and if there's a significant enough difference there between those two percentages win expectancy percentages, then you take the team that has the value, whether it's the favorite or the underdog. That's the basic. I mean, there are other things that I add to it too, but that's the basic thing. Wow, nice. Ladanian Tomlinson. One out of here, or just jibber-jabbering about baseball, and out comes LT. That's for Roman and the Chargers. One out of 25 Ladanian Tomlinson autograph. That is strong. Very strong. There's a Buccaneer that you saw there. Buccaneer relic, I think. And it's John Lynch. Nice. 13 out of 25. Old John Lynch going to Michael Blunt and the Buccaneers. Football betting, you wouldn't do on, most people don't do on the money line. It's all spread sports. Football is extremely difficult. Baseball, the season's so GD long. You know, dozen games a day, 162 games in a year across six months. Like, you can always find, like, their, books aren't going to get it right all the time. There it is. Someone was asking about, oh, no, they were asking about veterans. It's another retired player jersey and autograph to 25. I think there's like second year players in vet jersey autographs too. Alright, that's for the Rams. That's gonna go to Jeff Mason. But football, Vegas dials in on football. That's extremely hard to win. Nick Jaspi and I did uh and we may do it again this year. We we did uh the Westgate Super Contest. Are anyone are you familiar with the Westgate Super Contest? You pay uh, you pay a chunk of money to get into this big tournament. Winner can get like a million dollars or something like that, and you have to choose five games a week. You have to pick those, 
and then by the end of the season, the top 50 people will cash out, you know, and it's at different tiers and stuff like that. And um, Nick Jaspi and I, we, like, you have to win. It's extremely hard. You have to win, like, three to four. So you have to pick five games out of the, the eight every week, right? And you have to pick, um, or 16 games. And uh, you have to pick five, so you have to pick the right ones. Then you have to get them right. You have to win, like, three or four games a week to even to even get to that point. I mean, we're amateurs, so we, we tried our best, but it's hard. There's Debo Samuel, who I think is a Niner, 349. Nick L saying, haven't been on, catching up on his breaks, and he saw that Babe Ruth from Leather and Lumber. Nice. Congrats, man. Was that the dual relic? Debo is a Niner. That'll be for Victor Z. But for you football fans that are, that are watching right now or watching the video, keep hanging with us in the fall. We talk a lot of fantasy football throughout the week. We talk picks. We talk all sorts of things. There's Rashawn Gary again in the 349. Rashawn Gary is a Packer. I feel like I feel like that auto could be good, but we just need to stretch it out a little bit. I think if we grab that end right there and we can stretch that out all across the sticker, it'd be a good auto. I believe in you, Rashawn Gary. I think you can do it. Um, oh, also, I don't think there is a uh, there is a case hit per se in luminance. There's no like one per case thing or or anything like that. There's Kelvin Harmon to 99, but I think you you want to chase those draft day autos, which are the on card ones. And there's like maybe two, three of them in each case. So I guess those are kind of the the bigger hits that you're chasing. Kelvin, where do you go? Kelvin goes to the Redskins. And the last hit here in Pick Your Team Two, and then we're gonna randomize that dual on card autograph. Here's Pick Your Team Three. That is, did I say two? Three. Next Pick Your Team in the store, folks. We only have two cases left at the moment. We might get more, I guess, but. The two breaks that you see on the site right now, jazbeescasebreaks.com, are our final two for the time being. <laughs> Joey's saying Gary has the Rashawn Gary has the worst auto in the class draft class. Packers always drafting the worst autos. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like forget scouting, right, Joey? Teams should start drafting based on the quality of their autograph. Like Quincy Anunua would be like would be like the number one overall pick. Why don't they do that? How about the hobby one year? Just one year is all I'm asking. All right. Who will have the ultimate bird team mojo? Ravens and Seahawks on that one. That's the only randomizer we have. So let's fire up random.org. There's a blank list right there. Ravens, Seahawks. And let's randomize that list. Five and a five, 10 the hard way, 10 times. Good luck, Andrew, with the Ravens, and good luck, uh, Peter Lombardo, with the Seahawks. Once again, five and a five, 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10th and final time. Flips to the Ravens. After 10, and that is for Andrew Herman and the Baltimore Ravens. There you go, Andrew. There he is, Marquise Brown and DK Metcalf, two of the, I guess, two of the bigger names for wide receivers anyway. Marquise Brown was like a first-round pick, late first-round pick, and I think DK Metcalf was a little later in the rounds, but obviously had a lot of hype after the combine. So... There you go, man. There you go. You're welcome, Andrew. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for participating. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out in the chat. Whether you were in the break or not, I appreciate all the fun sports talk that we do around here at Jaspies. We'll see you next time. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com.